Thunderbird for Android is awesome. I'm going to talk about it. But I'm going to talk about Thunderbird in general. So a lot of people here uh, at our booth did not know that Thunderbird was still alive. And we got that kind of commonly at Foston, too, um, a month or so ago. And so I think it's really exciting to be here and to say, yes, we are alive. And we're doing really cool things, and you should pay attention. And a lot of people have used Thunderbird in the last, you know, 10 years and then dropped off for reason X, Y, Z. And I want to convince people to come back. It's worth it. Yeah, for lots of reasons. <laughs> Depends on what they are, maybe. I want to be able to run my regular desktop Thunderbird right out of my mail server. I don't want to connect to an iMac to get it up. I just want to read files. I just want to email in my files. You can do things offline. You can download them. You yeah, still you will have download to. Download them from iMac. Mm -hmm. Right, into what looks like a mail jar. But I already have them in a mail jar because my MPA delivers them to a mail jar. And I can mount that mail jar on my local machine. I don't know the actual answer to that. I mean, how, when was the last time you tried? Because I know that you uh, can. Release, I oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. 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 I mean, you can import like inbox files. Right, but you need from IMAP to then write a whole new mail bird right next to the mail bird that's already there. Yeah, sorry. I don't know if we can serve your specific use case. Okay, um, let's see, five minutes, sorry. Uh, anybody else have specific questions about Thunderbird? Wow, this thing is really big. Well, yeah, so Thunderbird is still alive um, and it's a great email client out there that you should all use. What's up, Galleon? Um, hmm? Yeah, I don't know, it's 30-ish, 30, 30 people. Yes, definitely. Yeah, no, that's, uh, it's great to be here to say, like, yeah, we're not dead. <laughs> Yeah, so generally, like people, including myself, when I joined, I didn't really understand the relationship between Mozilla and Thunderbird. And so Mozilla Foundation is a nonprofit kind of umbrella that has two for-profit entities underneath it. One of them is Mozilla Corporation. That's Firefox. That's 1,000 people. Then there's MZLA. That's Thunderbird. That's 30 people. And we're two separate legal entities that uh, try and make cool software to benefit the masses. Um, good grief, four minutes still. 100% user donations. No, we're all remote. I, I think the mailing address is technically in like California somewhere, San Francisco, I think. Yeah, but we all work remotely. Um, yeah, it's uh, so out of the 30 people, there's a surprising amount of people in Canada and Vancouver specifically. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, several in the U.S., some in Europe, some in New Zealand, one in Australia. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, um, so for Thunderbird for Android, we're moving to adopt Material 3, the Android toolkit, um, across the board. If you have an app, and there are apps out there that have a shared code base that work on Android and iOS and desktop applications, there's also often a performance hit that you see there. But if you have native apps, then you can mitigate quite a bit of that. So it's all a trade-off, right? But the shared part should be compiled to Plus Plus. You shouldn't have too many of those. 
Would you like to volunteer? Well, I would love it if he reached out on our Matrix channel, and then we could connect you with the right people to review those merge requests. We do. We have many, and I will point to them. Okay. Um, right. So it's a it's a minute to go. I think I'll just start a minute early. So um, I'm here to talk about Thunderbird for Android. Who the heck am I? You all came here to see Ryan Sipes, but <laughs> he's in Colorado. What's that? <laughs> Hi, Kyle. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, a little bit about me. My name is Heather Ellsworth. I've been at Thunderbird for about seven-ish months. I came from Canonical before then. Um, I am the Senior Developer Relations Engineer. Um, Ryan couldn't be here because there were whiteout conditions in Colorado, where I also live, but I came a day earlier, so I missed the snow. Uh, so I'm here to pretend to be Ryan. <laughs> and since I'm the developer relations engineer, here's a room full of developers that I'm going to relate to to talk about this cool thing. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have to start like with a primer. And so I'm sorry, but welcome to the open source email clients history 101. I am glad you are all here. <laughs> um, Thunderbird, you guys know what that is, right? <laughs> there have been surprisingly number of people that have stopped by our booth uh, at scale that don't know what Thunderbird is, and so it's been kind of exciting to talk about, just kind of introduce them to the concept of an open source email client. But a quick TLDR, if you don't know, is that we are an open source email client with a vast and rich history, about 20 years of history. Um, and we came from, uh, Mozilla and have kind of spun off into our own little thing. So this is um, what Thunderbird desktop looks like today. Um, the Thunderbird desktop application re recently got a facelift with our latest ESR. It came out in the summer. Um, it's nicknamed Supernova and the version is 115. Because we are still um, kind of married to Firefox and the code base and the build infrastructure and all of that, we follow the same release cycle. So there's one major release every summer. But we're not here to talk about the desktop Thunderbird. We're here to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> so way back when, <laughs> the smartphone was born with the first release of the iPhone. And the popularity of smartphones has only increased over time. So, yes, we are late to the party, but we're here now, and, and we're not backing down. Okay, so we were very late to the party. This is Exhibit A. You can see when we first revealed our intention to bring Thunderbird to Android. So, but to be fair, in our defense, some, you know, we were going through some stuff. So, some of you may remember that Thunderbird spent some time in the wilderness getting, you know, our stuff together. Um, we should have been dead, but we have been revived and we're thriving. So let's take a little trip down memory lane. Once upon a time, in 2012, Mozilla ejects us from the corporation and we became a community developed project. Um, so for these reasons, uh, it was really hard times. We certainly weren't thinking about mobile, we were just trying to keep Thunderbird desktop available to its users. Um, Mozilla no longer wanted to employ anyone to work on the project, to actively maintain it, so it was often in an unbuildable state, and there was really no vision. It was just kind of floundering for many years. But then, it was because of our dedicated community of volunteers that we were able to remain alive and begin to rebuild. Um, there were a bunch of people that took over maintenance, elected a council, we hired some folks, slowly but surely, with our little resources. And we asked our users for donation help, starting with a, ran, with, with a donation appeal on the website. And then eventually an in-app donation appeal in 2022. And what that means is when you open Thunderbird on a fresh start, it will have a little uh, message that just says, tells you, like, hey, we are funded by less than 1% of our user base. 
um, and we're 100% funded by that. So if you love this product and want to contribute to it, here's some ways you can get involved and please give us money if you value it. And so you can see that that made a large impact. So in 2022, that was the first time we asked for money inside the app. And we tried to not do it in a gratuitous amount, right? Every time you, it's not every day, it's not every five minutes, it's the first time you run Thunderbird on that booth. So that was huge and it, it made a lot and it, it gave us the foundation we needed to continue on and to grow our vision. We got better at telling our story and got focused, really focused on improving Thunderbird. So that brings us up to the year 2022. <laughs> but just kidding, right? Let's go back, <laughs> right? We're here to talk about Thunderbird for Android. So there's two things happening in parallel. One is kind of the history of Thunderbird. Now let's talk about K9 um, and Thunderbird for Android, how that got started. So while we were focusing on getting our stuff together, a little app was born that was focused on mobile called K9 Mail. So K9 Mail was started when Jesse Vincent wanted to make a patch to the original Android email application in Android 1.0. Back then, the creators of Android didn't really understand how to handle community contributions, so he ended up making his own app and sharing it with the world. So it chugs along for over a decade, and then eventually Ryan met up with Ketty, who at this time was the lead developer that took over the project. At Fostem, they started to talk about, maybe we should work together, join forces, let's see what happens. <laughs> right? Ultimately, it made sense to work together instead of developing a mobile client from scratch. K9 had a sustainability problem and needed help, and Thunderbird didn't have a good plan for getting Thunderbird on Android. So for real, back to 2022, we adopted a puppy. <laughs> Everyone loves a puppy. And so this was the announcement that we alluded to in a previous slide. Okay, so why? Why does there need to be Thunderbird for Android app at all? Like, why did we decide to work together? Well, there's a lot of people using Android. 94% of the world has a mobile phone, um, and 3 billion people are using Android. It's the largest single uh, computing platform by number of users, and it has a Linux kernel, woohoo! Uh, globally, Android takes about 70% of the mobile uh, operating system market share and that's 48 percent of the world's population full stop that's a lot of people that we can reach and emails never going away for better or worse um, and there are limited options out there so our main competition is Gmail default on Android devices and Apple Mail default on iOS devices there is fair mail and a handful of other open source Android email clients that exist, but not many, and not many with a reliable source of funding that is sustainable like Thunderbird. We have values that align with a lot of people. I think you all might agree since you're here. We don't steal data, there are no ads, and we don't do anything nefarious. Selfishly, we wanted Thunderbird on our phones. And this is how good software starts, right? It's through selfish reasons. <laughs> okay, so you need to be convinced to use Thunderbird for Android or K9. Okay, well today, K9 Mail does several things. So there's a unified inbox, just like, thun just like your Thunderbird desktop application. So you can have multiple email clients, or sorry, e emails, not clients, my bad. <laughs> you plug in your many emails, you can see them all in a unified view. <clears throat> it's very customizable. The swipe actions, so you can swipe and uh, <laughs> uh, just like on Tinder, but K9 will never reject you. Um, there's powerful settings, just like in the desktop client. It's very customizable. It's privacy respecting, like I said, your data is yours and you are the person, not a product. Um, and it's overlord provider agnostic. You can put in your various emails, whether it's Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, ProtonMail. 
Um, actually, proton mail we can't do in K9 yet, but we hope to eventually maybe one day do that. <laughs> you can do that with your desktop application, as many of us do. And then, of course, it's open source. Um, you can check out monthly updates that our main developer publishes on the blog.thunderbird.net. Um, and I'll provide a, a, a link to that later. But yeah, so canine mail is already a really strong, it's in a strong uh, usable spot. Now when we look at Thunderbird on Android, um, when one cool thing that's coming is sync. So the idea is with a Mozilla account, you can sync your account settings and automatically have all the accounts that you set up in desktop in your fresh install of Thunderbird on Android. You just log in with your Mozilla account and all of your filters, signatures, other settings, emails, all of it is there immediately. It's end-to-end -end encrypted, so we can't see any of your data. Um, calendar invites that hit your inbox should behave properly, and your contacts data will be available in your Thunderbird for Android application. At one point, both Thunderbird and K9 were ugly, let's be honest, and they hurt the eyes to use. We continually are trying to make it better and more accessible. Um, undo actions. Oh crap, I deleted that email, I didn't mean to undo. Uh, this might not be available in the first release of Thunderbird for Android um, because it comes with many potential issues that we may need to plan, you know, extremely careful. Uh, <laughs> we may need to plan for it extremely carefully so we don't mess that up. But it will be a feature eventually, if not in the first release. Foldables are becoming more common. So if you've stopped by our booth, booth 215, you've seen that we have Android tablets. So you can have, you know, K9 on your Android tablet. But foldables are becoming more ubiquitous. So we want to have a great experience on the larger form factors as well as traditional phones, too. And then we need to complete the adoption of the Material 3 Android toolkit. Right now, it's honestly a little bit of a mess. There's a mix of Material 1, Material 2, custom XML layouts, custom colors, and, you know, that just comes with an older code base, right? So we're trying to um, standardize all of that on Material 3. Okay, so what's left to do before we finish that rebranding? Um, there's still some UI improvements, and, and we'll kind of show some in, uh, pictures in the next slide that show where we're going. But folder drawer is the default Im implementation of unified folder alongside the ability to manage and organize long folder lists. Plus the message view. Improvements of the content rendering of a single message view. Um, and again, we are almost done with porting to uh, Material 3, um, but we need to complete that. And then we're simplifying the, setting, the settings. So you may have noticed through the history of Thunderbird Desktop that we have a lot of settings. <laughs> and so we're trying to nip that in the bud quickly with, it, with, uh, with the Android product. So let's simplify them, uh, simplify them, improve and organize to offer simpler and more intuitive paths for customization and control because that is still really important. Okay, so here's a few different screenshots. The rightmost one shows like our um, visual goal for the first release of Thunderbird for Android. The leftmost picture um, shows the new message view UI with a better visual organization and a little pill uh, to highlight the current account. So if you have multiple accounts, this one is from Thunderbird Ryan. You can kind of see, you know, what this is uh, going to. Um, and then in the middle, we kind of show the, the bottom drawer, um, the bottom sheets to better organize information about the senders and recipients. So we're trying to make this as intuitive as possible. Okay, so what's the plan getting there? Um, 
All of the mentioned updates will be applied to the current K9 application as well as the Thunderbird for Android. So they're going to be two separate apps. There's no way for us to migrate a profile from one to the other, unfortunately. Um, but we're going to maintain these two apps in parallel with no extra engineering effort. Thank you to Material3. Uh, once we're happy with the upgrades for K9 and feel like they are up to par with where we want Thunderbird for mobile to be, more feature complete with the desktop, then we will release Thunderbird as a separate app along with K9. So the exact same code base, except the theme is the theme is the only difference. The only difference there. There were a lot of um, existing K9 users that loved it, and when we announced our plans, they were like, "Oh no, you're going to kill K9." And we're like, "No, we're not. They're both there. You can choose which one you love. They're, they're going to be the same with just a slightly different theme." And we plan to keep them running side by side for the foreseeable f future. Um, so we were just at Fostem, and uh, if anybody's ever been there, it's hectic, it's insane, 8,000 developers, and they all had questions. <laughs> so here are just a few of them. Exchange support for Android. So at Fostem, we gave five talks. One of them was about our um, native implementation of Exchange in the Thunderbird desktop. That's a big deal because anybody that's had to use Exchange servers for work which is unfortunately common, would have had to use a paid add-on to get the finicky support there. But we are baking that in natively, so it is free, and it's written in REST, which is new and shiny. Um, so we, want, we need Exchange support in the Android app as well. And it appears likely um, that we'll be able to leverage the work that we've done for the desktop on the Thunderbird for Android, just because our architect is writing it in a modular and reusable way for the REST libraries. Currently, there is no bridge for ProtonMail on Android. Like I said, I really want that. Um, if that changes, we will we'll work on that. But right now, there's no plans there. Um, what about Thunderbird add-ons? I mean, add-ons slash extensions, they've been around for a long time. Would those be available for Thunderbird for Android? Well, not in the immediate future, but there are ways to support them eventually. If we were to implement Gecko View, then there's a path to getting some of the add-ons to work, but we'll see. And we'll see where that falls with our other priorities. Um, what about the upgrade path? Well, um, we want to offer an easy upgrade path, but unfortunately we're not able to migrate the profile from one app to the other. So they are separate installs, but we want to encourage people to lean into that Thunderbird branding that we all know and love, and please install Thunderbird for Android. But like I said, we'll continue to maintain both apps in parallel for the foreseeable future. So if you would like to try out K9, soon to be Thunderbird for Android, you can go here. It will take you to a place where you can choose to download it from F-Droid or Google Play and even, I think, the APK directly. Uh, you can, oh, I guess I, did I show links? Oh, yeah, these links. Yeah, the monthly updates, important. Um, the code is all there on GitHub. That's where the issues are, too. The developers are super responsive um, and really nice down-to-earth people. And then, of course, there's the Matrix channel. All of our public engagement channels are on Matrix, and the community team is doing a, a good job trying to create, you know, generic safe spaces as well as specific ones to just development or design or Android. So yeah, if you have an Android phone and you want to try out Thunderbird for Android, please do. Um, I went through this much faster than I had planned to. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. What's up, Kyle? Oh, thanks.
Right, so the question is, is it possible to export settings from Thunderbird for desktop to import into Thunderbird for Android? Right now, no, but the idea is with a Mozilla account, it'll sync. That, that's, that's kind of, and that's one of the important things that we wanna have before that first release of Thunderbird for Android. So that you don't even have to do anything to export and import, it just happens. The question is, uh, is it going to be transparent or like to be able to set it up with Ansible? Yeah, I mean, if the settings were exportable and importable, but still sync, then the same is going to happen. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, if it was exportable and importable by like JSON, um, I don't know the answer to that. I think that's a, a good suggestion. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for the suggestion, and I can take that back. And our developers might have thought of that, but I don't know the answer. Um, so the question is about using Proton Mail, but with a third-party server that acts as a bridge. Is that going to be right? That's a good question, and I don't know. Yeah, I would encourage you to go to the Matrix channel and ask it. Yeah, Eggy. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense to use the API um, to do some authentication to be able to pull what you need. Um, yeah, I think I'll certainly take that back and see what they say. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? Oh, you got the mic. Great. I actually have two questions. One is, is this URL to the K9 that I have loaded today on my browser or the new version that is the dev release for Thunderbird? Oh yeah, good question. So this URL will take you to download the K9 that you have today, but then you can also go and update to the beta. I understand that <clears throat> the extensions from Thunderbird that are available to me now probably won't work on Android because compile differences and stuff like that. Will the API that's currently in Thunderbird be supported natively on Android so that somebody could adopt or rewrite or augment the Android platform with extensions and drop them in? I think the APIs will be different because it's a different code base. Um, but. that be available? Will there be an API that could mimic not maybe one for one, but overall consistency? Possibly, visual? possibly. It's not on the, it's not on the roadmap now then. I don't know. I don't, okay. I mean, all of the code is available and I don't see why they wouldn't publish some sort of API. 
if it's not, not already out there. Yeah, so th this is, I guess, more of a question about sync in Thunderbird on the desktop, um, okay. which I've heard comes someday, but I, I haven't really looked into myself. Does that sync include things like uh, calendar accounts for Lightning? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the idea is using your one Firefox slash Mozilla account, right. it will be able to sync all of your settings, including your calendar stuff. Okay. Um, what are the what are the most popular add-ons for desktop Thunderbird these days? I, I saw that in one of the screenshots there's a GPG um, or, or PGP sort of symbol. I, I, I came in a little late. I apologize. Yeah, I, um, no, that's a good question. Like, what are the, some of the most popular add-ons? Yeah, and um, are those things addressable in other ways on Android that make extensions not really as big a deal? Right, yeah. Um, I don't have that list off the top of my head, but you can go to the web extensions site and sort them by popularity. I can tell you the most popular add-on is the Exchange add-on. The OWL add-on that will soon be moot. No, it was just that um, there, there are several reasons why we are choosing to add that functionality in natively. One of them is the sheer popularity of it. And it's a paid add-on today, and it would be really nice if our many, many, many users that need that add-on to get their work done didn't have to pay for it. Well, we can't control how many people sign up with Gmail or Yahoo or Outlook, right? And it's not that the tail doesn't matter. It's that we need to prioritize our limited resources. I forget the gentleman's name, but he's writing a book on how to create your own email server. And um, yeah, the, um, well, I'm sure he's using post script or something, post or something. But anyways, um, it's not just a long tail because if you have an account on uh, Outlook or uh, Google, you probably have an account on Outlook, Google, Yahoo, Hotmail, and others. And having them all keep up with you including your business accounts is, um, well, it'd be nice to have a single presentation uh, of everything. Uh, but yeah, it, so it's... Facebook lets you do this that inbox channel that's pretty good in terms of making it look like one stream of stuff. Does that help? Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Oh yeah, yes sir. Right in the middle there. I've been part of the Linux uh, community since 1998. And uh, for a long time, I used Evolution. And one of the best features of Evolution was the ability to put all of my data, whether it's the address book or the actual emails or calendar into a compressed file format and be able to reinstall Linux 
and then take that zip file and import it into evolution again and have everything reappear. Um, that's one of the main reasons I chose evolution in the first place. And I was wondering, are there any plans to make a similar feature for Thunderbird? That exists right now. It's existed for years. Uh, Thunderbird centralizes your data into a profile folder. And you can easily just lift that folder onto wherever you want it to be and then import that with Thunderbird. Is that what, is that what you were asking? So maybe not visible. Well, yeah, not a lot of visibility for it. But if you go to the um, the app menu and then go and then just choose help and troubleshooting information, it'll actually open a window that shows you where your profile is. You can open uh, open it directly from there and then just copy it to the USB stick, upload it to Nextcloud. Uh, that's what I do. I have mine on Nextcloud. So whatever installation I have, I just download it and import it, and it's it's. It is. You can also you can also do that. <laughs> you can do that as well. Just yeah, just file export. Literally file export. Yeah. Um, come by the booth, and I'll show you guys. I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Thanks, Jason. But you know what, it's, it's, good, it's good feedback to hear you know, two people who are very experienced with software who don't understand how to do that. And so that's something that we can you know, do better, is making that more visible. That's good feedback. Anybody else? OK, well, if you do come up with any questions later, please stop by our booth for a shiny sticker. Booth 215. Uh, booth 215, we're right next to GNOME. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thanks, everybody.